Welcome back to another killer concept. Today we have a killer that is based off of the little Shop of Horrors film. If any of you have seen that, you know exactly what I'm on about. If you haven't, a bit of information for you. It's about a person who works in a flower shop and they end up finding this rare exotic plant, which is actually an alien plant. And it encourages him to feed it, but it only drinks blood. So he has to feed it blood from himself before he ends up having to kill people for it. Spoilers. <laughs> but no, it's a really old film. Uh, if you get the chance, watch it. I highly recommend it. But yeah, so this killer is based off of him. And he's a lot like a zone killing killer. Blocks off areas and prevents survivors from going to certain places. But without further ado... Let us get right on into the information for this killer. As of their speed, they are 4.4 meters per second killer. So, on the lower end. But, it is only because they are actually a small person. And that is their height, they are actually a small height. Uh, their terror radius, since they're only a small person, is 24 meters. So, small terror radius again. Which works brilliantly for this killer. And their weapon is one of two things. They can either use their garden shears or their ability. And saying that, why don't we get on to their ability? Carnivorous fauna. You can plant up to three, maybe four plants across the map. These plants grow into three different stages. They are planted at stage one, and after some time we'll go to stage 2, then after some time we'll go to stage 3. Stage 1 is the most basic of these plants. Basically attacks any survivors that get too close to it in its cone of attack. And it would inflict them with deep wound. Yes, inflicting a health state on them. It cannot take them out of deep wound in stage 1 though. So if you're already deep wounded and you walk past it, there is nothing it will do to you. Stage 2, it allows it to break objects, such as if a person has pulled down a pallet in that area, that will be destroyed. If there is a wall that is blocked off, it will break them. And generators close by to this plant, you might as well forget about them, because it will constantly damage the generator. You can work at it, but it will put you into deep wound if you're not already in it. So, only work on them if you're injured. Though I would highly recommend you don't. Because stage 3 allows it to be even worse. It allows to be able to down survivors who are in the deep wound state. And yes, they can still put you in the deep wound state. After some time after they put you in that, they can then attack you. And put you down into it. So, do be very careful. Or very quick moving through these areas. On top of being able to put you into the down state, they can also drag you to the closest hook in the area. They can not attach you to a hook, but they can drag you towards it and leave you right in front of the hook. So when the killer comes, they can just pick you up and hang you straight on it right away, without any worry whatsoever. Now, I did say that their weapon can also be a version of these plants, and that is because you constantly have a plant in your hand that allows you to attack survivors and put them into deep wound state. Though, it's not a very long-ranged attack, and after you attack someone with it in hand, you have to wait a few minutes before you can use it at all. That includes replanting one, if you need to. No matter how many you have on the field, you will always have one that you can use in your hand. Even though you cannot plant that one that you have in your hand. On top of that, for the survivors to help them get through this terrorizing game quite a lot more, they are able to make plant killer. Or weed killer. For each stage, it requires another set of weed killer. So you want to kill a stage 3 plant, you need 3 lots of weed killer. You want to kill a stage 1, one piece of weed killer will do it perfectly fine. Now, that does make it more difficult for the survivors. Though, the weed killer is made constantly throughout the map. And each station you can collect them at will have 2 as a maximum. So just remember, the higher the stage, the more you'll have to use it. So after you kill the plant, the killer can just place a new one whenever 
wherever. So, always be on your toes. Now, let's get on to their perks. Originally when I had this character, because I do write these out now, especially with their perks, I had two different sets of three perks. And I picked the best out of each ones. The ones I think would work the most. And the ones I think would be funnest. So, let's get into perk one. Toxic Herbology. When a survivor heals, it takes three times longer. And whenever they miss a skill check, they also scream. Making it easy for you to find them. Perk 2 is Hex Soul Song. A big part of the film is that the plant can sing. So I thought it would be quite fun to make that into a perk. Once a survivor is hit, any sound that a killer can make will be as if they were right on top of that survivor. You break a pallet anywhere, it sounds like you broke a pallet right behind them. You attack someone and down them. It sounds like they've just been downed right next to you. Not a huge inconvenience, but enough to make it so they have no idea where you are. For the sole fact of, your killer radius will be like you are right next to them as well. So, they can keep it up and play the game perfectly fine. But would you really want to do that? Lastly, perk 3, Twisted Partnership. Actions across the game are linked. That means that if a survivor decides to stun you with a pallet, all survivors, including the one that stunned you, are stunned for a few seconds. Though to help them with that, they also do get the speed boost afterwards just to get them out of the way a little bit. If they are blinding you with a torch, they all also get blinded. It's just little things here and there. On top of skill checks for the survivors. They fail a skill check on a generator. Anyone who's working on a generator will have their skill check missed and blow that gen. Or if you're healing someone too, you miss a skill check there. Generators or healing will blow. Just to make it a little more annoying. Though it is only a hex, so they get rid of the totem and things will go perfectly back to normal. Well, normal enough. Now, as I've been doing lately with these lot, we're going to go right into their lore. Now, for you, those of you that have seen the Little Shop of Horror film, you'll be there like, this is nothing like it. Not very close to it at all. And the ones of you that haven't, don't take this for the way which the film is. The film is different. This is just a representation of what a killer could be if they were, they, if they were inspired by Little Shop of Horrors. But yeah, let's get right on into their lore. This person was just like Claudette, loved plants, knew a lot about them too. Ironically, they were pretty good friends with Claudette, before she disappeared at least anyway. Whether Claudette remembers this person or not is unknown. After all, who knows what the realm does to your mind. But this person didn't start looking for her. No, no, they had their own goals in mind. They were looking for an incredibly rare plant. I couldn't tell you the name myself. I'm no botanist. But apparently it was a plant that would change the world. Change so much about how things could be perceived and how the world works. It would literally be like finding the Philosopher's Stone. Or so they say. Through many years of ruthless research treacherous searching and going to all manner of places following any small bit of lead that they could find to manage to find this object find this plant eventually they found it a very rare plant they only found one of them however they presumed more would be growing in that area but it wasn't an area they wanted to stay in it was an area they almost died in a few times just getting here so one plant would be good enough, and if it looked like it was wilting, he'd take a cutting and try and grow a separate one. Eventually he managed to take it home, and start caring for it. Though, there was stuff that was happening to this plant, stuff that was never recorded, or at least no one wanted to record it. 
if this was how the plan truly was. The entity itself had been messing with this plant, messing with it since the day it decided it wanted the botanist, for it knew that he would be a very useful ally. It corrupted to the point that it became sentient, much like the one in the film. Its sentience was fascinating and amazing. Nobody knew that a plant could explain its feelings or say what it wanted. But this one wanted blood. It would not eat much, and the only thing that would satiate it was hemoglobin, which many of you know is inside blood. True, there are other ways you can get it, but blood was the easiest way. And, well, the botanist didn't mind bleeding himself just a little bit. After all, the plant wasn't very big, it was a very small plant. At first, anyway. He kept on feeding it his own blood. More and more. Until it eventually got to the size of the room. Almost the size of his greenhouse that was outside. He had to move it. He couldn't keep it in the house any longer. And it most definitely would not fit in that greenhouse anymore. So he had to plant it in his garden. Luckily, being a botanist, he had such a huge garden, so he planted it at the very bottom, away from where anyone else would be able to see it, or notice anything happening. He kept trying to feed it his own blood, though those drops that he could give were not enough. A few times he went out there and found bones that on the floor. Only animal ones, small ones. Wild rabbits, or foxes and badgers that roamed in the forest nearby. But this wasn't enough for the plant. It was too big now. Small creatures like that weren't worthwhile, and deers wouldn't go anywhere near this thing. They had prey responses. They knew this thing was something to be feared, so they stayed clear away. The botanist knew what he needed to do. He needed to feed the plant. So he went to find things to feed the plant with. First, he tried dead bodies that he stole from the morgue and stole from freshly buried bodies. Though as we all know, hemoglobin doesn't last very long in dead bodies. So it got some nutrients from it, but nowhere near enough. It threatened to eat the botanist and go and find its own food if it couldn't feed it. He knew this wasn't worthwhile having. Living was painful for him to be able to think of sacrificing people to this creature. The let it rampage on its own, well that is a much worse fate. Eventually, he found someone, a man, drunk off of his house, out of the pub in the night. He managed to encourage him to bring her home, said he'd shelter him for a while. Turns out, he was homeless, so he had nowhere to go, and he was more than willing to follow the botanist. The plan ate him up with joy. But, as eight, it grew needing more. So the botanist kept on getting more and more people until it got to the point that people started to notice that lots of people were disappearing in very quick succession. The botanist was freaking out. He didn't know what to do. He didn't know where to go, how to change this and stop the plant from wanting to eat more. So the voice whispered, and the plant was also responding to it. The plant mentioned it was an old friend of his. Someone who he knew, that knew how to feed it. And it could help. Botanist didn't care for what the plant said, though he wanted to hear the voice in his head. But it knew how to feed this thing, without causing much harm to anyone at all. He wouldn't have to kill people anymore, just feed people to the plant. And do as the voice said. And the plant would never get out of control ever again. He accepted this offer. A way in which he could manage to get people without physically killing them properly himself. A way to feed this plant and stop it from being terrorizing anywhere. And with that, the plant started laughing. It laughed hard as oozing sap came out of its mouth. It looked like tar as it consumed the botanist and even the plant itself. The botanist emerged in the realm, greeted by other people. Well, they thought he was another survivor. That was, 
until the plant emerged behind him and just ate one of the survivors. That is how the botanist came into the realm, seeing the only friend that he knew, Claudette, running in fear from the new killer. Thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, this was The Botanist, based off of Little Shop of Horrors. If you enjoyed this, do leave a like. If you have anything that you would like me to make based off of book series, films, TV shows, or anything, I will make a killer for it. Even if you, even if you think that you don't want this person to be a killer that you want me to make, you want me to make a survivor based off of this person, let me know in the comment and I will make a survivor. Who, who knows, it might become a new series of creating survivors. After all, I do have survivors based for all of my other killer concepts. I've just never published them. But if it's something you guys want, I'm more than willing. And without further ado, if you enjoy what I'm doing, hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified of when my next killer concept comes out. My shorts are now coming out based off of my old killer concepts. And I've also got a TikTok where the shorts are also going with the same handle. So do feel free to check them out. And without further ado, this Cerberus is going to water his plants before they get too hungry. Ow!